guys know how much your immune system is not right, your muscle growth is not going to happen as quick, you won't burn body fat as fast, your metabolism won't operate as smoothly. Welcome to CrossFit East 10 Over the Bar Podcast. The goal of this podcast is to answer common questions and encourage conversation between coaches, members, and the community. I'm uh, Josh Brock here with head coach Rob Stacy and Brennan from Five Star Nutrition. Today we're going to talk about the top five supplements uh, that you can use uh, to help your training in CrossFit. Um, Brennan, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started? Well, I'm the general manager at Five Star Nutrition Johnson City. We're right here from Louisiana where I ran another five star and my background is in dietetics and exercise science, which is where I get a lot of my knowledge from as well as well just enjoying it. So I do a lot of research on my own. So here we are. Here we are. Um, so first, um, Rob, you want to run down the list of uh, supplements that we got there? Yeah. So we've got a, a couple uh, supplements that we that we wrote down here, and that you've suggested for. Of course, I've used a uh, majority of the stuff that's listed here. Um, but we'll start off with one that people, especially in CrossFit or you know fitness wise, or don't understand for performance reasons that they need, uh, and that's carb carbohydrates. So go a little depth on what carbohydrates can do you for, for performance and then what you need to limit on them maybe if you're wanting to go for fitness and look good and move well and all that stuff. <clears throat> so carbs are the fastest fuel source your body has access to. There is nothing else in your body that your body can access faster for immediate energy. And so when we talk about eating for training, you need to make sure your body has levels of glycogen that match the level of training that you're doing. And so if somebody wants to be stronger or wants to get bigger, whatever the goal may be, you need more carbs to trigger more glycogen and faster muscle recovery and muscle growth. If somebody's cutting down, usually you limit your carbs. Now an athlete who wants to lose a little bit of weight, you need to be careful with that because you still need carbs to perform. Your body will not perform the right way without glycogen. And so it really just depends on the type of training on what people need. Uh, another thing with carbs people forget is the importance of post-workout carbs. So there's actually three steps to muscle recovery post-workout. So when you work out, you stretch the fascia tissue of the muscle, you tear it down, cause micro tears and inflammation. That triggers your body's response to push nutrients there to cause recovery. The first thing it needs is carbs. It's actually replenishing the glycogen because the first energy source your body uses is stored glycogen in the muscle cell. And so without replenishing the glycogen, you can't start the recovery process. And so carbs post-workout, especially in fast digesting carbs, it's really important for starting muscle recovery and triggering growth. So uh, one thing, like just for people listening, like it, like you said, like a low carb, we want to be very careful with. Mm. A no carb diet is just about something that is just, I it's almost reckless, yeah. it's for, especially reckless. with CrossFit. Mm -hmm. Very reckless. Uh, so you have two things to worry about if you're going no carb. It's one thing if you want to do a no carb. Some people don't tolerate carbs well. And so for a base level athlete who's not trying to go to regionals or trying to be a games athlete who just wants to maybe lose a little weight and feel better, low carb diets can work well. But going no carb, you run the risk of two very serious illnesses. One is ketoacidosis, where your body is uh, oxidizing fat cells too fast and your ketone level rise too much. So ketones are extremely acidic, which is why it's called ketoacidosis, where the pH of your blood will actually elevate to a dangerous level, can lead to a diabetic coma, and some very serious uh, issues, you know, if that gets to that point, or rhabdomyolysis, which is when your body breaks down too much muscle and at least too much nitrogen in the blood, which can actually lead to basically nitrogen poisoning throughout your entire body, where your body will accelerate the rate of muscle breakdown, your kidneys will begin to fail, and it can cause full organ shutdown if it's not. Yeah, checked. so that's, that's like a, a big topic and like what people sometimes think, especially, you know, Jack here runs our paleo challenge or our nutrition challenge. And, uh, you know, certain people in our box do do, uh, you know, the ketogenic diet, mm -hmm. but they have to understand, just like you were talking about, ketogenic and paleo is not no carb. No. It's, it's no. just, <laughs> your, carb. It, it's, it's a, it's a cleaner carb and just less of carb. So. Uh, if you're thinking about going no carb, that's something that's going to put you in a position that's not going to end well. Compromise. I think people know? forget about the Atkins diet from the late 90s where people were getting hospitalized because of it. And that's without doing CrossFit because CrossFit yeah. wasn't yeah. an organized thing then. Uh, doing no carb is your body can't do that. Your brain has to have glucose. Your brain cannot run on ketones like the other parts of your body can. Yeah. Your brain has to have glucose. And so you're, you're not going to function properly without it. Awesome. 
So that's 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 carbs. I hope everybody you know <laughs> understand the importance of that. And the carbs reason, are not bad. Yeah. The reason, the reason <laughs> well, I started off with that. Out of the point I want to talk about carbs is the difference in good carbs, and bad carbs. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not well, I mean, there's not really a bad carb per se, but you have a difference between, like, say, fruit. Fruit is mostly fructose. It's mostly sugar. Uh, immediately before training is okay because your body will convert that to glycogen. But if you take a carb like that, because fructose doesn't have a high affinity for glycogen compared to, say, rice or a potato. Yeah. Both of those are very high affinities for muscle glycogen and will be converted to glycogen at a higher rate compared to fructose if it's not used immediately. And so if you eat a bunch of fruit at the beginning of your day, you don't work out until six o'clock at night, the odds of that carb being converted into body fat are pretty high yeah. compared to if you use more complex carbs, like sweet potatoes or rice uh, throughout the day to get your carbs, because that's gonna have a higher chance of converting to glycogen, less of a chance of converting to, converting to fat. That's, I'm glad that we started off with that one. The, uh, the next one I wanna hit on is uh, something that I've always been a big believer in. CrossFit talks a lot about it. You, you know, anytime that I've heard anybody go to Five Star or been around you in there, you're constantly telling people that's a supplement they need to think about and that's fish oil. Let's go a little bit in depth on the importance of fish oil and you know, how it's a healthy fat and how fats are not the enemy, especially in CrossFit or a high performance sport. So fish oil has a benef list of benefits about a mile long. It helps literally every single organ system in your body, whether you're talking about your eyes, your heart, your brain, your lungs, your skin, uh, muscles. But as far as the performance athlete goes, you have it, one, it's a medium chain triglyceride, which will help stop the storing of bad fats. So if you're trying to lean down or just stay in good shape and look athletic, that's an important key role there. It's an anti-inflammatory as well. So reducing muscular inflammation or joint inflammation when you have high risk motions like Olympic lifting or high stress motions like a back squat, um, you also have joint cushioning that you get from it. So you actually help lubricate your joints more. So doing any type of CrossFit type of activity or any high stress activity or high impact activity, it's really important to have that lubricating factor to prevent wear and tear on the joints. Yeah, so I mean, that's something I use quite a bit is fish oil in it. And there's a, uh, a guy that I follow, you know, probably who it is, Charles Poliquin, one of the top strength coaches in the world, was one of the first guys to keep telling people like, you gotta up your fish oil though shits by almost three folds of what mm -hmm. it recommends. And there was an actual study with him uh, doing it with another doctor who was like claiming, saying, no, you don't need to do that. Well, the doctor actually turned around and emailed him back. This is a recent podcast I listened with him. Uh, and the doctor actually emailed him back and said, you know, I went back and tested your, your hypothesis of three times the recommended amount. And there's people that are lowering their blood pressure. They're losing weight dramatically and they're, they're just living a much healthier life. And, it, and that's one thing that in CrossFit's you know, literature, they talk about how it's the miracle drug that a lot of people don't understand that that, that supplement is so important for your, for your performance, vitality, all that stuff. You also forget about EFAs being an important role in hormone production. Uh, omega-3, 6s, and 9s are all used in different hormones, whether it's estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, insulin, all of those uh, need essential fatty acids to be produced because most of them are fatty chains. Yeah. And so having healthy levels of essential fatty acids, whether it's from food, supplementation, et cetera, is really important to maintaining a good hormone profile and performance. Yeah, so that's something that uh, once you, it's almost like when you turn your body over to that fat storage and you're starting to use it, you've got glycogen, it's like you have a turbo button that you could push at any time. And that's a very <clears throat> potent fuel source. So just for a caloric intake, purpose, if you look at a carb or a protein, one gram of carbs and protein is four calories per gram. One gram of fat is nine calories per gram. So it's more than twice as potent per gram. So if your body is switching over to burning fat for energy, that's an extremely potent fuel source your body can use to increase performance or increase anything really. Yeah, and then uh, on top of that too, the, the other things that I was you know reading about is it's like how to get, you know, how to get your body to switch over. How do I get my body to switch over to burning fat? Like I'm doing CrossFit, but I should be doing it. Well, in reality, you got to realize that if your your fat intake is not high, your body doesn't know to use fat. Yeah. So if you're thinking I got to use less fat or I got to cut fat out of my diet, your body's actually like, I don't know what fat is. I don't know how to use mm -hmm. it because you never give me any. A lot of it's nutrient timing as well uh, when we talk about carbs. Uh, carbs pre and post workout are a lot more important than say carbs before you go to bed. Yeah. Uh, at the store, we like to use a car analogy and mm -hmm. that you want your gas tank to be empty when you go to sleep, thinking of carbs as gas and your body is the car. 
And so you want your gas tank to be used throughout the day. You want to fill up early on or before you work out and then burn it all off and be empty when you go to bed so that way your body does start to use some stored fat in its healing processes. And just yeah. lie by switch over that fuel source. <laughs> key, key to this is just like carbs is not, uh, you're not, they it's not the enemy. Yeah, <laughs> so that's why, that's kind of why we started off because everybody thinks that we, you know, we're starting off with the most important to the next important and to the last. Yeah, it's all pretty equally yeah, important. Yeah, equally important, but the ones that people think are important, creatine. So let's, let's explain what creatine, creatine is. Creatine is... <laughs> This is probably the most misconstrued supplement of all time. Creatine got a bad rap a couple years ago because people were mega dosing it and taking 30 grams before they were taking <laughs> ridiculous Some amounts. crazy stuff. And so yeah, if you take a ridiculous amount of creatine, your body can't fill it and it will actually crystallize in the nephron of the kidney and shut down the kidney. But you have to take insane doses to do that. And that's why when people ask about it loading phase, I cringe a little bit because uh, it's a really bad idea. Don't load creatine, guys. Uh, what creatine actually does is it increases ATP synthesis in the muscle cell. So ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, is the main energy source your body uses. It's what you convert glycogen into, it's what you convert fat into, or ketones into, as your body's using that for energy. You have a process called the Calvin cycle, where your body will take ATP, break it down into ADP, or adenosine diphosphate, and then it'll recycle that, and it'll start over again. It'll bind another electron and make ATP again. Creatine just makes that process happen faster. Right, and so that's why creatine is very important for endurance and strength, especially for people that like to do a no or not a no carb. Let's not do that. A low carb diet. Having that creatine is even more important because you want to increase that ATP synthesis. Your body's already struggling without having enough glycogen to create that ATP, and so if you can make it a little easier for your body, you'll see a big increase in strength and performance. Yeah. So uh, talk a little bit about. Uh, when we would want to do that because that's something that I've been wanting. I've mm -hmm. talked to you a little bit about this when I was talking to you at the store about uh, and you explained all that to me and I've been wanting to implement some more creatine. I've talked to Joe Brown, one of our coaches who does you know, one of our nutrition courses. It's something I'm wanting to implement more mm -hmm. in because again, back when I was playing baseball in college, you know, the, the big uh, thing with everybody was like, oh, if you take too much creatine, you put on so much water weight and all this other stuff. But and there are different types of creatine, like you have creatine chloride, which actually won't bind water molecules, so you won't hold that subcutaneous water and look all puffy. Creatine monohydrate, depending on the quality of it, if it's not micronized, you will hold quite a bit of water doing it because of the way it binds to water. If you think about it, monohydrate is a single hydrogen ion, while water is a polar molecule, which is two polarized positive hydrogen ions, and so they're going to bind to each other. Uh, Granted, not all monohydrates are made the same, but with creatine, I usually, for an athlete, pre and post workout is ideal, uh, and you want to take creatine every day. Creatine is something your body can store in the muscle cell, just like glycogen, and so you want to keep that readily accessible creatine storage inside of the muscle cell at all times. Nice. And let's talk a bit about protein, and what, and, and types of protein, and what works for you, and what doesn't work for you, because uh, you know, a lot of the listeners don't understand this. I came to you because I had such a problem with uh, proteins. I was mm -hmm. searching for pro like I, I could not find a protein that worked for me. That doesn't mean like performance wise. That means like health wise, digestion wise, yeah. digestion -wise like just feeling normal. Like mm -hmm. I, it, it was big. Like the only protein I was able to get that was normal to me was through my foods. Right. And uh, I actually came to you to your store and I uh, talked to you a long time about this. And to be honest with you. It's, it's the only protein that I'll ever take the rest of my life because uh, there for so long I knew that I had uh, you know a lactate like yeah problem. yeah lactose problem. So talk a little bit about protein and stuff like that. Protein <clears throat> is obviously the building block of everything. Every single cell in your body is made of protein. You've got to understand DNA in itself is a protein. It is a chain of of proteins bound together that makes DNA. So protein is used in every single bodily process in the human body. It's one of the most important things we need to put in our body. Uh, if you're trying to lose weight, you need protein to help with nitrogen retention and muscle retention. If you're trying to put on size, well, that's the second step of muscle growth. We talked about carbs being the first. Protein is the second through mRNA synthesis and converting protein to muscle. Different types of proteins. The main difference is different digestion speeds and different rates of digestion. Uh, some people do handle different proteins differently. So if we talk about a whey, whey is a dairy-based protein. Whey also has probably the biggest discrepancy as far as production value. So if you talk about a whey concentrate, which is the most common protein on the market because uh, the cheapest to produce, according to the FDA, a whey concentrate can be anywhere from 20 to 80% purity. 
So there's a big, <laughs> yeah. big gap <laughs> between a high quality weight concentrate and a really low quality weight concentrate. Uh, then we move into like weight isolates and weight hydrolysates, which the difference between an isolate and a hydrolysate, unless you're say a bodybuilder who needs immediate digestion and perfect macronutrient profiles, that's the only real difference between them is a slight difference in digestion rate. Both are above 90% purity. They have to be to be considered an isolate or a hydrolysate. A hydrolysate is just a step further in the breakdown process. And then you have lactose. So whey again is a dairy based protein. It's actually uh, it's a byproduct of milk. And so it has lactose. Isolates obviously having less because they're separated more from the milk ingredients and broken down to a further degree. Uh, but they can still be an issue with people that have lactose issues. Somebody who's lactose intolerant just doesn't produce lactase to break down that sugar and that's what causes lactose intolerance. Uh, that's why a lot of proteins like the one you take, protein one, uh, has lactase in it. Specifically so people can take a whey because a whey is the fastest digesting protein you can put in your body. Period. There's not a protein that's going to digest faster, especially an isolate. It's going to digest extremely fast, usually 15 to 20 minutes, and your body's using it to yeah. start the recovery process. And so that's why a lot of the proteins you see now, especially the higher quality proteins, you'll see a lactose or lactase in them for that reason. And so anybody, even people that have a lactose an issue, can take it and digest it properly. So, um that's like phenomenal. Like it's like when we talk about individual design for workouts, if you have an individual design workout, it works for you and you only. The same thing with protein and diet, it works for you and you only. Mm -hmm. So uh, to hit on protein, you know, we do have some members who are vegan or vegetarian. Mm -hmm. What's the protein that you suggest for them? Like what, what do you suggest for them to do? And I know, and that's another thing, you know, some people say, you know, I, if I take so much soy protein, it's going to produce more estrogen and yada, yada, kind of go in depth on what they can kind of look into. Soy proteins do have estrogen properties, especially in high amounts. It can, I mean, the amount of estrogen you'll produce with it really varies depending on the product and how broken down it is. But we do try to stay away from soy as well for that reason, it's because we just avoid it. Uh, when you find your good, higher quality, Plant-based proteins, you'll see rice protein, you'll see hemp protein, you'll see pea protein, uh, what's that, sweet potato protein, I've seen in some. And so the thing with plant-based is they don't digest as fast as a whey, but they do digest faster than a decent amount of proteins. And so uh, for vegan or vegetarians, we have that option. For people that have a dairy allergy, which is a little bit different than a lactose issue, dairy allergy, there's just no way you can take it away because you're going to react to it every yeah. time. Uh, or casein or any of the other dairy based proteins. We have collagen isolates as well. Um, collagen isolates are kind of a crossbreed where you still get the protein value from it, but you get a lot of health benefits too. Uh, if you take a collagen isolate, you'll see an increase in elasticity of the skin, healing of the joints, digestive health, and uh, hair, skin, nail health all at the same time. Awesome. Awesome. So that's. That's, I mean, so basically, you know, if you have a, you know, have a specific diet or lifestyle, there's a, there's a, there's a protein, protein for you. Yeah. So that's, that's safe. To, that's good to know. Like most of the time, you know, if you hear most of the people talk about it, they're like, ah, oh, you know, you, you got to get it this way and this way only. Well, that doesn't work out for everybody. No, it's like the difference between a blended protein and a whey. And it's two different, uh, two very different uses. Let's talk about one more thing. It's something that I implemented and it was, it was huge for me and me and you like, got in on it and talked about it and then uh it's been so beneficial and but the way i talked to you about it, i was like man i was like you know crossfit dude i can't take a pre-workout i was mm -hmm. like my pre-workout is one cup of coffee in the morning that's it like i don't need all that the jazz like i don't need my heart racing through the roof <laughs> i don't need to i don't need to feel like i've just ran two miles to work out <laughs> like or like a two mile sprint to, to work out and that's beta alley okay? mm -hmm. like so um i say hey you know what you know what can I do more to uh, kind of shut down my or increase my lactate threshold, right? So not shut it down, but increase my lactate threshold. And, and Joe had told me this uh, to implement beta alanine. I'd heard about beta alanine on the podcast that I listened to. Then I go to you and you say, "Dude, why aren't you not on beta alanine?" So I was like, "Well, hell, There's I got to get on beta alanine, I guess." So. Um, talk a little bit about beta alanine and then we'll go after this we'll talk a little bit about what's the best for somebody's performance what's the best for somebody's fitness and we'll, we'll run down that too so beta alanine chemically goes into the bloodstream by a certain amino acid called histidine and creates a byproduct called carnosine and the carnosine is actually what's going to buffer lactic acid uh, with beta alanine it needs to be a minimum of about three grams per dose usually at least once a day uh, it does take a little time to become fully effective 
So to see full effect is similar to creatine. You want to take it every day, uh, usually pre-training. And so over time that carnosin and the beta alanine will build up in your system to where it will actually start to buffer lactic acid. It'll balance the pH in your bloodstream so that way your lactic threshold will increase and your endurance will be better. So basically what, what we're getting at here is like you, you have pre and post workout stuff that you need to take and take it often. Um, one thing that we've left off the table, which I wanted to leave it to the end because if you've made it this far, this is probably to me the most important one. Because all this stuff doesn't happen unless you're taking probiotics. Not not the correct one for you, right? right? So, talk a little bit about probiotics and what the importance of that is. Because if a probiotic is quite literally a ball of good bacteria that will help culture your gut, and so your gut is the base of literally everything your body does. If your body doesn't digest food, you don't get the proper energy, you don't get the proper macronutrients. If you're taking supplements <laughs> and your digestion is not that good, you're not going to get the most benefit from those supplements. And so if you want to ensure that everything is working properly, use probiotic. And usually I just recommend using a well-blended probiotic. So something of 10 plus strains of different types of bacteria to make sure you're covering every basis inside of your body. The so most they, popular yeah, being right. like, <clears throat> like a kombucha. Right. It's like what people, probably at the gym, everybody probably knows what kombucha yeah, is. Yeah, I think everybody's heard of that. It's a fairly new thing, but it's, it gained popularity real quick. Because, yeah, it's a probiotic infused tea, basically. Yeah. It's, it's one of the, I mean, this is going to sound the silliest, and people that might be listening that don't know our gym might not know me, but I, you know, where I was a baseball guy, mm -hmm. going to the going to a game, you know, eating hot dogs was, and then, you know, we're talking about good nutrition here. Hot dogs aren't the best, whatever. I would always find, and this was the craziest thing, and this is before I like research nutrition stuff, and people are gonna think this is crazy, but when I would eat a hot dog with sauerkraut, mm -hmm. I would feel amazing after that. I mean, I would literally feel like I had energy. It's fermented. Yeah, and, it, and that's part of that's a probiotic. You know? And I didn't realize it until I started looking at foods that were probiotics, and all of a sudden sauerkraut comes across, and I go, oh my gosh, that's the reason that. I so I, you know, I look at Brittany, my wife, I was joking, I was like, we need to eat more hot dogs, and she was like, not really. And I was like, I need more hot dogs. So not really, but uh, it, 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 that's kind of stuff that, this, that probiotics do. You know, I, now I implemented probiotics. And I noticed a dramatic, like that's one of the reasons I've, you know, been leaning out lately is because I've implemented this stuff. Like a healthy gut is going to make the rest of you run so much better. Your gut biome is it's everything. everything. Yeah. yeah. Without a healthy gut, nothing works well. Your immune system's not right. Your muscle growth is not going to happen as quick. You won't burn body fat as fast. Your metabolism won't operate as smoothly. Yeah. So I hope everybody heard that too. You know, you mentioned immune system. That means you're going to get sick less less likely, you know, less often. Uh, that might sound crazy to you if you don't understand bacteria, but putting good bacteria in your body is actually good a good thing. Yeah. Um, good so let's talk, let, let's talk a little bit, because all that stuff was great. And I think that we hit, you know, and I hope that we're gonna get you back on and talk a little bit more in depth on certain things on this stuff, because it's been awesome. But let's talk about, uh, what's, what do you, th how would you put it in order? What we just talked about, carbs, beta alanine, fish oil, protein, uh, probiotics. What would you? How would you put that as the most important for somebody that's just doing this for fitness reasons? Like I want to look good. I want to move well. Uh, protein and probiotics are going to be your first two. Again, protein is your building block of everything. It doesn't matter what type of diet or what goal you're trying to hit. You need protein. And if you're struggling to get protein inside through the day, use a powder. It's convenient. It's easy. It tastes good. Yeah. And so, and then the probiotics, like we said, if we're not digesting our food properly, it's just not. Gonna and I, I know a lot of people might uh, hear that and they're like, how much protein should I take? Like on the, on the person that's wanting to be fit, mm. what, what, what do you suggest protein you use? It really varies a lot from person to person. It depends a lot on the other macronutrients they're taking in. So if somebody's on a higher carb diet, so somebody who maybe wants to build muscle, uh, obviously your protein intake needs to come up, but your carbon intake doesn't come up more than your protein intake. So for the average person, it usually varies anywhere from one gram of lean body mass to 1.5 grams of lean body mass. And I hope, I hope everybody, I've heard that too myself. And I, and for me, I understood it. But for a lot of people, they don't understand lean body mass doesn't mean your current weight. No, lean that body means your mass lean body mass. If you remove all the fat from your body and you leave the skeleton, the muscle, and the water, that is your lean body mass. Yeah. So that's something that they can find. At yeah, we actually have five star nutrition apps. Yeah, a body yeah. machine that'll actually do that. Yeah. So like for those listening at home that are here close to us or, or you see a five-star nutrition that's close to you, they actually have a machine in their uh, 
in their store that's that tracks all this so you need to go and get this you need to go get this documented like this is important stuff if you're looking to increase your fitness uh, so let's talk a little bit now about performance what do you think as a performance athlete I'm, I'm, I'm grinning right now because I know what you're gonna say is probably the one that's gonna be the most important for you to start with but let's talk about performance like if I come in there and I say you know what Brenna, I want to I want to compete locally. I want to you know go to some regional competitions. I want to place in the top 200 in my region uh, for CrossFit. What what do you think is the most important for that? Number one, carbs. I knew you're going to say it. I knew you're going <laughs> to say it. Your body <laughs> uses carbs so easily, and if you get a good quality carbs in your body, where your body's converting carbs to glycogen super super quickly and has a high level of glycogen ready to use in the muscle and liver you're gonna see your performance skyrocket. Awesome. Try to go deadlift your PR with 50 grams of carbs one day and then eat 300 grams of good quality carbs and go try to hit the same PR and see how much different it feels. Well, I appreciate it, man, and this, this, was, this was awesome. I knew it was gonna be you know, a great sit down and I'm looking forward to having you on more talk about you know, nutrition and stuff. And, and for those listening at home, make sure, hey, they're right up there, they're really close to us. So if you're from another gym or if you're from our gym or you're in the area, uh, you need to go check these guys out. I mean, Brennan will sit there and he will, he will make sure that you are on the right path. He's not, as I tell people, there's people that you know work at different nutrition shops. It's the only one I've ever been to that actually is trying to not sell you something. It's actually asking if you're doing better. Like not very knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable. First off, very knowledgeable. Uh, second off, exercise science backgrounds. <laughs> that yeah. that's very rare when you Most get people don't know that. that, that or yeah, that's stuff. very rare for a nutrition store. And on top of that. Always asking me, you know, how's your performance? Like, are you doing this? Are you doing that? Not asking me, hey, I need you to try this product out. Like, I've never heard you say you need to do this, this, and this. So I, it's always like, hey, how's that protein working out for you? Hey, how's that fish oil that I recommend working out for you? And to me, that's that's caring about the customer just mm -hmm. as much as us caring about our clientele too. Hey, my thing is, if I run a business just to sell people, like at the end of the day, I'm running a business. I'm here to help people, but I am running a business. I got to keep the lights on, right, and the doors open. If I'm sitting here trying to sell people and I'm not focusing on giving people results, those people aren't going to come back because they're not going to see progress. Yeah. And so that's just a bad business model in any yeah. way, shape, and form. So one, I do care about people and that's why I do what I do, why I moved up here to open this store. Um, so if I take care of my clients, just like you guys take care of your clients, which are actually usually the same people, uh, yeah. they come back and they enjoy their experience with us and they want to come and see us. And so it just helps one the business grow and it helps people get results and stay motivated. Uh, all right, so uh, we're gonna do our moment where we have our featured member. And this week our featured member, member is uh, Larry Wayne Bellis. Yeah, all time favorite, Bellis. <laughs> all time favorite, yeah, Bellis. Also known as Beelis. All right, so uh, how long have you done CrossFit? Five years. All right, what is your favorite thing about CrossFit? Uh, definitely the competitive nature and the atmosphere. So talk a little bit about what makes the competitive part fun to you. Uh, well, I always played sports growing up, but uh, probably my freshman year of college is when I found out that I was pretty much done with football. I guess I could call myself an athlete for playing sports, but I was a pretty big kid. So uh, right then and there, I actually set a goal. I was like, well, you know, let's see if I can lose some weight. I mean, there's no reason to be 300 pounds anymore. Yeah. So I got a little bit into cardio, not CrossFit. I didn't know anything about CrossFit at this time, but I was just like, let's change the diet up, lose a little weight, see what I can do. And I actually lost 50 pounds in like two or three months, less than a semester. So that's when I got in my head and I was just like, you know, this is something that, that really could, could be fun and trying and see how I can mix up my workouts. And then I uh, went to ETSU for, college of course but my freshman year or whatever I actually had a friend there that did CrossFit and so I was watching him do some of his workouts and I was like that looks stupid <laughs> I'm gonna stick to my bench press and my three quarterback squat and this that and the other but uh, I got into MMA there too as well and so that's kind of like a, a, a real high intensity sport I guess you could call it you got jujitsu and boxing and kickboxing just stuff that really raises your cardio and things like that and actually from MMA is when I met that friend again and he said, well, you know, it's kind of like CrossFit, why don't you try it out? And I tried CrossFit one time and I was like, yeah, this is, this is insane. It's, it's a way better rush than playing football. It's a better rush than fighting. I mean, it's, it's insane to be able to just put yourself in a mindset to where it's either quit or go. Yeah. What is something that you do or value that keeps you going? Uh, integrity, actually, being honest. Like, 
when you're in there working out and nobody's looking, you can always, you know, shorten a rep or maybe add a number or two to your score, something that nobody would know or see. But being able to know that when you're in there training day in, day out, and you're busting your ass, if you beat somebody on the board or if you lose somebody on the board, your score's on. Like, that's exactly what you did. You can look at that open score and compare yourself to everybody on there. And maybe some people you're thinking, ah, the score is not that best. But as long as you know that the score you're putting in is legit and you earned that score and you worked your ass off and you busted your tail and everything you've done is exactly what's accumulated to that score. I mean, it, it's a good feeling to know at least you're honest. Sleep better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sleep better. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's, it's a sport. Yeah, yeah. It's just compared to every other sport. There's cheating in other sports. And luckily you have referees that can call you out on it. Maybe you get away on a play here and there, but overall, I mean, you either put in the work leading up to game day and, and come game day you win or lose because of how much effort and how much intensity you put in throughout the week or the year or things like that. Last question here. What is your favorite thing to do outside of the gym? I'm going to be honest, I'm super lazy outside the gym. Sports. I, watch yeah, sports. I love to <laughs> sit on my butt and binge watch Netflix. <laughs> Honestly, that's my favorite thing to do. Like when people are like, you want to go hike? No. <laughs> I don't want to go outside and be fit and use my fitness. And I mean, a lot of people do, and that's great. But honestly, when I want to be exhausted, I go work out. Outside of working out, I like to chill at home and watch TV and eat food. There you have it. I'm still a fat kid at heart. There you have it. Larry Bellis. <laughs>